My travel to Afghanistan began many, many years ago on the eastern border of my country, my homeland, Poland. I was walking through the forests of my grandmother's tales, a land where every field hides a grave, where millions of people have been deported or killed in the 20th century. Behind this destruction, I found a soul of places. I met humble people. I heard their prayer and ate their bread. Then I have been walking east for 20 years, from Eastern Europe to Central Asia, through Caucasus Mountain, Middle East, North Africa, Russia. And I ever met humble people, and I shared their bread and their prayer. This is why I went to Afghanistan. One day I crossed the bridge over the Oxus River. I was alone on foot, and the Afghan soldier was so surprised to see me that he forgot to stamp my passport, but he gave me a cup of tea, and I understood that his uh, surprise was my protection. So. I have been walking and traveling by horses, by yak, by trucks, by hitchhiking from Iran borders until to the bottom, to the edge of the Wakan corridor. And in this way, I could find a nur, hidden light of Afghanistan. My only weapon was my notebook and my Leica. I hear prayer of Sufi, humble Muslim, hated by Taliban's hidden river, interconnected of the mysticism from Gibraltar to India. The mosque where the respectful foreigner is showered with blessing and with tears, and welcome as a gift. What we know about the country and the people that we pretend to protect, about uh, the villages where the only one medicine to kill the pain and to stop the hunger is the opium. These are opium addict people in the roof of Kabul, 10 years after the beginning of our war. These are the nomads girls who became prostitutes for Afghan businessmen what we know about women 10 years after the war. Clothes in this uh, nylon bag made in China, the name of Burka. I saw one day the largest school in Afghanistan, girls' school, 13,000 of girls studying here, in the rooms underground, full of scorpions. And their love to study was so, so big that I cry. What do we know about the death threats by Taliban's, nailed on the door of the people who dared to send their daughter to the school, as in Balkh, the region is not Shikur, but full of Taliban, and they did it. My aim is to give a voice to the silent people, to show the hidden lights behind the curtain of the great game, the small words ignored by media and the prophets of a global conflict. Thanks. <laughs> 